I then spent a bit of time just sharing dates for upcoming evidence gathering. So as you may remember from previous presentations, we have moved away from the idea of using the term prelim. It's an outdated term. Uh, your child is more than just one performance. We like to gather evidence throughout the year, but we also want to make sure, like we did at the end of fourth year, that all our young people have an experience of a formal assessment environment. So from the 23rd of November up to the 7th of December 2023, that's going to be the evidence gathering period. And within that time, our young people will experience the hall for all their assessments. There'll be invigilators in place. And it just gives that formal condition, which provides robust, uh, a robust environment uh, for every assessment and uh, allows our pupils to experience uh, what they will experience come May and June of 2024. But for me, again, it's part of this journey. It's about every piece of work has value being a phrase that is constantly in the mind because we have a had experience in the past of pupils going in having performed very well within a classroom but then for whatever reason don't perform on the day of a formal evidence gathering but it's it's about looking at things in in the round it's more than just that performance so it's about taking away that that kind of layer of worry a teacher's not going to drop a pupil level because of one poor performance so it's about building a positive mindset in pupils towards evidence gathering and again, another phrase that's used consistently with the pupils in conversation and assemblies, that evidence gathering is an opportunity for pupils to showcase their skills and knowledge. So it's about reframing things and trying to make the experience as comfortable and as positive as possible for our pupils. I then followed up with an SQA update, just saying that the, the timetable for 2024 has now been published and is available online. Uh, the exams run from Monday 22nd of April to Wednesday 29th of May. I also mentioned that uh, most courses had modifications to assessment during the last two academic years have now returned to full assessment. So if you remember back kind of COVID times and, and, and post-COVID, there was adjustments to lots of courses where assignments and various pieces of assessment were taken away. For, for the majority, these have now been reintroduced. But as I mentioned the other night, if there's a practical performance and assignment or some kind of assessment connected, which makes up, you know, 15%, 20%, 30% of a full mark, then it's about controlling the controllable from the pupil's perspective. So, for example, if you're in music, if you're in drama, if you're in PE, and there's a sizable part of your overall grade, which will be based on a practical performance, you have got opportunities to practice and practice and hone those skills within the practical performance in order to perform as well as you can. Those are controllable aspects. You know what's coming. So it's about making sure that all our pupils are focused to control the areas they can control. Because remember, when you go into an exam environment on that day, then you don't know what's going to be in front of you uh, in terms of that paper. You've got maybe a rough idea, but you don't have full control over it. So it's about getting that mindset, about controlling the controllables, being positive and making sure that all assignments and practical performances are done to the best possible level. I then came in and shared some information from Mr McFarlane, our PT Skills and Achievement in regards to work experience. Um, traditionally, anyone involved in the Scottish education system will have experienced a one week uh, work experience week during their uh, school days. Uh, things have changed now. It's not just like a designated week. Uh, people can access work experience at a convenient time for them. Uh, we've had a lot of pupils who go out at different points throughout the year. They make sure it doesn't clash with any assessments. If they're comfortable, if they've linked with uh, Mr McFarlane to help organise that and get all the relevant contacts, then we're more than happy to support that. Uh, what we do do, however, as pupils move into sixth year as part of their induction month, there is time set aside there for work experience. So we talked about uh, it being really important to gain experience and how universities, colleges really look favourably upon experience. And it also helps when you're uh, filling in those application forms 
or personal statements. And uh, work experience can be either in person or online. So if you have any questions about work experience, Mr McFarlane is the teacher to contact. And we finished off with a slide which gave some visual images of uh, previous work experience that our pupils had uh, connected with and had a good time in being involved with. Now, uh, a lot of these pupils had a really keen interest in those areas, so they made sure their work experience was linked to a possible uh, future career as well. So there's lots in there. Any uh, questions you may have, Mr McFarlane, PT Skills and Achievement, is the person that you can liaise with. I then gave uh, an overview of what S6 looks like and some of the opportunities for pupils who are thinking about staying on past S5 into the final year of school. And Mr Carson, one of my deputy colleagues, is the head of year for S6. Uh, S6 starts with an induction month where the pupils undertake their SQA Leadership Award, where the committee structure that we run in S6 is shared and pupils get the opportunity to start to build that S6 community and mould what their S6 is going to look like. We also have S6 leadership team in terms of captains, vice captains and prefects. There's also university supports, uh, which are shared during that month as well. And also part-time college and foundation apprenticeships, which are available through the subject selection process in S6, where in S6 pupils choose four subjects to study that year over the one year. And there are various different uh, opportunities that arise. So Mr Carson will follow that up in due course. But I thought it was important to give some information on what S6 looks like. I then passed on to Mr Richardson at this point, And he took uh, the families through information on a culture of support and challenge. You can see by the visual there... A, an environment where every young people person will flourish and at Hillhead we're aware that every pupil grows at different rates and needs different supports and help in order to reach their full potential. So Mr Richardson's uh, role is in really attempting to, to make that happen and it's about, as he said, building that culture of challenge and support and that's through tracking progress. When we know or where a pupil is and, and how they're progressing. It's about putting in relevant supports. They can be universal or targeted, and that's underpinned by a coaching culture that we use here at Hillhead High School. He talked about the different types of support, and the first layer is classroom support. What is going on on a daily basis across the six subjects that your child is sitting? And down the side there, are the bullet points of the various different supports and things that are in place which allow teachers to build evidence of the progress that our young people are having within their uh, within their subject. Now if you think back to that phrase every piece of value, every piece of work has value, all of those areas, you know, if a pupil is putting in maximum effort and doing really well, that evidence is building. Right? That's why a teacher, a classroom teacher knows exactly where that young person is within their class. That allows them to put appropriate supports, have appropriate learner conversations and set appropriate targets for each individual pupil. Just above that classroom support is departmental support. So this is headed up by our faculty heads or principal teachers across the six subjects. And they have that overview of everything in terms of monitoring attendance and homework, but also looking and focusing on supported study. They also review all the evidence that is gathered in order to support the classroom teacher, put uh, supports in place for each individual pupil. And then there's the wider support, the supports that are universal to all pupils across fifth year in terms of study skills, well-being Wednesdays at lunchtime, online study support, and also it comes back to those hillhead habits of support and challenge in which Mr Richardson and myself as deputy head teachers will really be pushing this session. If you think back to last year in S4, there was the coaching programme. So every S4 pupil had an, an assigned coach, which was a teacher who volunteered their time to link with and support 
a group of pupils, an additional sustainable layer of support, which is focused on well-being and study skills. So it's that balance of pastoral and nurture support along with academic and study support. So it's about continuing the relationships that were built in S4. So again, it's about a layer of support which allows our pupils to link with their teachers, to get advice, to make sure they're in the best possible place in order to succeed and achieve. And Mr Richardson just finished off with this slide, which was an overview of like from a pupil's perspective about this whole school support. So you've got the six classes on the timetable there making up the base, the foundation of support. Above that, with each faculty head having an overview of attendance and uh, progress. And then above that, a uh, pastoral care support for learning uh, deputies uh, who are also feeding into that whole school support but it's underpinned by a coaching culture where there's conversations taking place where there's challenge and support. Mr Richardson then finished off with this slide again just taking it back to the fact that by tracking pupils progress we're gaining evidence on where they are and then we can put the relevant supports in place, which is underpinned by a coaching environment. So what we've got is we've got a whole team pulling and pushing in the same direction to make sure that all our young people are successful at Hillhead High School. We then finished off with a period of questions and that wrapped up our evening. Thanks for listening.